Today we have very important topic. Without this knowledge you won't be able to proceed with this training course. Because to be able to program on Java you need to have GDK installed on your computer. Agree? We will learn which GDK version to choose and how to make sure that Java is properly installed on your computer. The latest Java version based on today is Java version 13. Oracle has 6 months release cadence, so from now on new version of Java will be released each 6 months. Does it mean for you that you need to learn Java each 6 months? Not necessarily. As a developer this can be quite overwhelming. How many applications do you have to go back and to update now? Or how many servers in your data center constantly needed to be updated to the newest Java release? There are two things developers hate. One of them is unnecessary change. It is even crazy to think about keeping several applications or several number of servers up to date with the newest Java release. That is why the concept of an LTS was established. A Java LTS, which stands for Long Term Support Release, is a version of Java that will remain the industry standard for several years. To give you an example of this, Java 8 was released in 2014 and its extended support will end by December 20th. Probably Java 8 is the most popular nowadays. A lot of companies still rely on it and there is no urgent need to upgrade to the newest Java version. Java 11 is the latest long-term support version based on today. For the educational purposes I would recommend you to use the latest version of OpenGDK which will allow you to use the most recent and up-to-date version. And to be completely honest, between version 8 and version 13 there is no dramatic difference which will be noticed by junior developers. There are some of them and we will learn them during the training course. You will also notice that you have Oracle GDK and OpenGDK available for you for download. Probably main difference for you right now is that OpenGDK is completely free including commercial use. Oracle GDK is not free for commercial use. There are also some other differences, for example when it comes to performance Oracle's is much better regarding responsiveness and GVM performance. Oracle GDK is fully developed by Oracle Corporation, whereas the Open GDK is developed by Oracle and the Java community together. So I recommend you to use Open GDK. This will allow you to learn Java platform and to implement powerful applications. Now let me show you how to install GDK on the computer from scratch. Go to Google and search for GDK Java Net. Let's open this link. Select 13. Download these archives for Windows or Mac respectively. I'm downloading this one. Now extract archive. Let's have a look what is in here. So here we have bin folder. You can find in it all tools and programs which we need to create our Java applications. For example here you can see Javac. This is Java compiler, which compile our source code, our files written with letters to bytecode. Here is javadoc, application to generate documentation from our source code. In the next lessons I will show you how it works. Here is Java application to run Java virtual machine. Our next steps, please open command line in this directory. To do this type cmd right here and press enter. So here is our command line. Type java dash version and press enter. Now you will see that you have OpenGDK version 13 here. And this is completely fine. But try to navigate one level up in your file system tree. The cd command also known as change directory. It is a common line shell command used to change the current working directory in the various operating systems. The first single dot or period means this directory. The double dot or periods means the parent directory. The next one up the tree. Let's type cd, double dot and press enter. Go ahead and type the same Java version command here. Java is not recognized as an internal or external command. Why do we see this? Because from this level we can't get access to Java program which is located in bin folder. As a software engineer I want to be able to call Java and Java compiler on my machine from any place in my file system. 
To do this, I need to configure environment variables. Now I will show you how to configure environment variables on Windows machine. If you have Mac, please take a look to resources attached to this lesson. I have special written guide for you. Do mouse right click on my computer, open properties, go to advanced system settings, environment variables. And here we are. Now, even despite this is not necessary, the rule of thumb is to create Java home variable first. This variable will refer to the GDK home folder. You can have multiple Java home variables to be able easily change Java home version on your machine. Like I have here for Java of versions 8, 11 and 13. Let's create this variable. Press new button here. Java underscore home. And let's copy this path. And paste it as a variable value. Press OK button. Now we have Java Home here. Next thing to know is that Windows has pass variable. Let's find it. Here it is. Pass is an environment variable specifying a set of directories where executable programs are located. In general, each executing process or user session has its own pass setting. Without pass variable, we would need to run programs using absolute pass. The pass variable prevents us from having to write the entire pass to a program. Let's adjust value here. Click New, type percent sign, Java Home, percent sign, file pass separator, in Windows it is backslash, and bin. That's it. In case you have previous Windows version, most likely you see something like this. Make sure that line ends with semicolon and write the same. So you can choose one option or another, it's up to you. And now attention! If you had your terminal opened, close it and open again to apply all changes. Let's again open terminal here. Let's go one level up. Now let's type the same Java version command. Here we are. Now we can run Java program from any directory. Let's also check version of compiler. Call javac version. Here it is. If you see version number, then everything is ok and we are good to proceed with the next lesson. Let's summarize what we have learned on this lesson. We learned how to choose GDK version, what is the difference between Oracle GDK and OpenGDK, how to install GDK on your computer and how to configure environment variables. Let's now review your homework for the next lesson. So for the next lesson you just need to repeat everything what we have discussed during this lesson and make sure you have GDK installed.